Now we're gonna uh, perform the osteotomy for the central incisor. 85-90% uh, of the cases of um, central incisors, we're gonna use an implant called Sarah Root 21. Sarah Root 21 has an apical diameter of 4.1. The last crestal thread is 4.8, and the gum line is 6 millimeters. So this implant is 12 millimeters from the apex to the last crestal thread. So, because this is a heel site, we're going to drill a little bit deeper than 12 millimeters. The reason is because we have to take into consideration that this is a thin bi biotype patient, so I suggest that most of the times when you drill, you drill uh, two extra millimeters than the implant length that you choose. So, if you choose a 12 millimeter implant, if you drill 14, you will be able to place with a, to play with the margin of the restorative shoulder. So, if this is, if you drill 12, the implant will go all the way down to here. And then, if the gum is thin, you might have one or two millimeters of super gingival margin. So, to place a 12 millimeter implant, you should drill 14. To place a 14 millimeter long implant, you should drill 16. To place a 10 millimeter implant, you should drill to 12. If you don't drill two extra millimeters, you might have to prep the margin a little bit, and sometimes you might have to also reduce a little bit the abutment, depending on the occlusion of the patient. So, we're gonna start uh, performing the drilling and the drilling direction should be uh, an invisible line, invisible line between this incisal edge corner and this other so between the central and lateral the drill has to come in the same direction so we're gonna make just a test with the initial drill to show more or less the direction that we have to follow so we have to control the mesodistal position and also buccolingual in the beginning it's more important that we control the incisal edge direction. So we don't want to be, uh, we don't want to have an implant too much protruded and too much um, to the palate. So again, this is more or less the direction of the drilling that we're going to follow. So we're going to start with the initial drill. Sometimes we have to use drill, drill extender for cases like this. So again, to place a 12 millimeter implant, we're going to use two extra millimeters more. So we're going to drill to 14 that way we are going to be able to decide if we put the implant more or less deep. So we start in the mark that we created before. So uh, speed, speed, um, drilling speed is about 800 to 1200. We can do in the beginning 6 millimeters or 8 millimeters of um, drilling. And then we check again the direction. It's also important to see that our drilling area is exactly at the same uh, distance to the buccal bone and to the palatal bone. So every time we should try to have the same amount of bone, palatal, palatal and buccal. So it looks like we can go a little bit more towards the buccal, half a millimeter more. And then the direction of the drilling is pretty much um, correct. So we're just going to move the drill all of it, just a little bit slightly more buckled. And again, we don't have to go deep yet, we're just gonna push the drill more towards the buckle without changing the direction. Okay, so now we can see that the osteotomy has been pushed to the buckle and in terms of uh, music distal it's uh, pretty much on the center we might have to push just a little bit more visual but more or less this is the direction that we have to follow and also if you look at the direction of the alveolar bone we are also in the center of the bone so we're gonna go now all the way to 14 millimeters so first line is six millimeters and then it goes increments of two so six eight ten twelve fourteen so the second last line that's where we want to drill irrigation is important so right now i believe we have reached the 14 millimeter line
Yes, the 14 millimeter line is already buried and the direction of the drilling is following the incisal edge of the other teeth. And then again, I believe we can push the drill just slightly more to the mission, but it's pretty much in the center of the socket. So um, after the initial drill, we're gonna go to the next drill. This is 2.3 and it's also the same uh, length. So it starts at six, eight, 10, 12, 14. So we're gonna go all the way to the second to the last line. So we're going to put the drill. And we're going to follow the incisal edge. We're going to need the drill extender now. So right now we are at 12 millimeters and we have to drill two more. So we're getting close to the 14 line and that's it. Right now we are at 14. So this is 2.3, now we're gonna go with the 2.8. And we wanna check, every time we increase the diameter, we wanna check if we are in the center of the osteotomy. If for some reason we think that the osteotomy is not in the center, we still can correct the center of the osteotomy. So if we are more palatal, instead of going to the next drill, what we do is we place the last drill we have used and we do more pressure towards the buckle if we have to go to the buckle or more palatally, we have to push more palatally if we see that we have more bone, bone available on the palatal aspect. So uh, we are in the center, so we're gonna go to the next drill. This is 2.8. We can drill slow and sometimes we can even collect the bone particles that come out. But this is, um, it looks like we are already at 14 millimeter line. So let's go and check. Yes, so the last line, the last line is 16. So we are we are at 14 right now. And, uh, is the distal position is um, pretty centered, so we don't have to correct anything, we're just going to increase the diameter. This is 2.8, so now we're going to do 3.5. And this is the last tooth drill we're going to use for this type of central incisor implant called Sarah Root 21. So this is the last drill, and we're going to drill all the way to 14. So this is 16, this is 16, 14. So 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. This is the line of 14. So again, we're gonna drill. We can drill slow and collect bone particles if we need to make some graft or standard drilling 800, 1200 with patch of irrigation. So we're getting close to the line of 14. And right now, I think we are, so we can check. We are still in the center of the socket. We can see that we have the same amount of bone on the buckle as well as on the paddle. And then when we put the 3.5 drill, we can see that we are in the center of the incisal edge. If for some reason this drill does not follow the incisal edge and we see the drill going more buckle, then we have to correct the direction and we would have to use the drill, this drill or the drill before and change the direction of the implant. So if it was to buckle like this, we would have to go back into the osteotomy and make the drilling direction, as you see here, following the incisal edge. Okay, now the last drill that we're going to use is called countersink. The countersink has the same shape as the implant, only on the gum level portion. So the countersink is more, the countersink is more narrow where the threads are, but the rest of the diameter at the gum line is the same diameter. So when we are drilling in the heel side osteotomy, like this, the depth that we want to drill is approximately in between the two lines. This is the last crestal thread, as you can see here. The last, this thin laser mark belongs to the 
crestal, the last coronal thread, and this thick laser mark corresponds to the shoulder of the implant, where the crown is going to sit. So we want to drill the osteotomy and submerge this line about one millimeter and a half. So the bone has to stay around these two lines. So we are going to use the drill extender and we are not going to change our drilling direction. We have to follow exactly the incisal edge of the teeth. So we can decide to go slow or fast, but lots of irrigation. And I think we have reached the, the final position. So we're going to check every time. It's very good to remove the drill from the contraindle, place it into the socket, and we can check where we are. And on the, um, we can see that the blades of the, we can see that the blades of the countersink are about one and a half millimeters above the bone. So this is more or less the shape of the bone that we want to have, and then. We're going to start screwing the implant into the socket. So this is how the implant is going to come. The implant is going to come in a package like this. So we're going to unscrew the package. And then we're going to start screwing the implant in the osteotomy. And slowly we're going to remove the silicone cap. Okay, and we're gonna start screwing down the implant. So this is the this is the Sara Root 21 driver and we can choose this is the Sara Root 21 driver and we can choose either handpiece, contra angle or torque wrench. So in the beginning it might be necessary that you um, use your fingers to better control the direction that the implant is following. So you can start several turns and then if you like the direction that the implant is taking then you can go and switch to the contra angle but i'm going to finish before with torque wrench and then i'm going to show you how you do it with contra angle so you screw in as tight as you can with your hands you can check once in a while if the direction of the implant is correct and then when you reach too much force with your fingers then you go and start wrenching you can see that the direction of the apartment is pretty much the same as the other teeth. So maximum torque 35 newtons. So right now the implant is still going in soft. It's nice to push here. So we make sure the implant does not spin on the same place. And then this is very important. The driver for the um, Sarah Root 21 has two vertical lines, one on the buckle and one on the palatal. So this is one line right here and the other line is here. So it has a buckle and palatal. They are symmetrical, so both sides are identical. It doesn't matter which way you put the driver. So every time you decide to go deeper with this implant, just remember that you have to go 180 degrees. You cannot go 15 degrees more because then you're not going to have the implants aligned. So the buckle and palatal walls align. So we can see that we still can go uh, deeper. This is the shoulder of the implant, so it's okay if we can place the shoulder of the implant more or less at the same level as the CEJ of the other central incisor. So this is what we aim for, so we're gonna um, keep on screwing. It's important that we press down the implant, so we push down as much as we can so that the, so that the implant does not spin on the same place. So we still have about 20 newtons of torque, and then before we decide to go deeper, right now, as you can see, the vertical line is perfectly on the buckle. So when we remove this driver, this is the situation we have. And we still can see that the shoulder of the implant is slightly more super gingival than the CEJ of the other central. So we still have room to go deeper, but not too much. So uh, we still have not reached 35 newtons. So we're going to do 180 degrees more. And now the vertical line is um, already on the buckle aspect. We just need several more degrees to have it perfect aligned. And then we check one more time. We take down the driver and we can see that the implant went down. So 
So right now, um, with this implant position, um, let me check how much torque we have. Right now we have a little bit less than 35. So in case we want to go 180 degrees deeper, we still can. So we're gonna go and turn the implant 180 degrees more. We can see that we are still under 35 and the line, the vertical line of the implant is starting to come. And right now it's almost there. It's almost uh, on the buckle. So we're gonna check the position. And this is probably the ideal position where we would like the implant to be. So more or less the shoulder of the implant is at about one and a half millimeters from the bone. And if we look at the other tooth, it's more or less at the same height as the CEJ. So if for prosthetic reasons we have to prep a little bit the palatal corner of the abutment and make it more parallel to the other central incisor, we can. So we have margin to reduce a little bit this corner so that the crown space will be very identical to this central. We can also reduce you can use now Essex to protect this. This implant has a very nice torque. Right now it's um, probably about 35 newtons almost. So, so the ideal would be to place an Essex and the patient would protect the implant from chewing forces. So um, I hope you like it and thank you for watching.